Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's D-Lord, and today we are going to be running it back with our Pittsburgh Steelers Man of 25 Connected Franchise Series. So, if you did not see the last video, I did lose the actual file that we had to the vanilla stock version of the Steelers franchise. I asked you guys, do we want to run it back? How were we feeling? Everybody said pretty much run it back with mods, so that is what we're going to be doing. So, in this video, we're going to be running through Season 1 or simulating through Season 1 Getting to the start of season two, I'm going to be showing you guys how my franchise tool works and some of the mods that we have. So that way we kind of have an understanding on how progression, trading, things of that nature goes when you have a modded version of Madden. To make this as least confusing as possible, I'm going to be unlisting all of the first videos. So all of season one from the Steelers franchise before should be unlisted. Uh, I'll have the link if you guys really want to go back and rewatch some of those videos, but it really doesn't matter. We're going to be treating this as if it's an entirely new universe. Only difference is we are simulating through week one. So starting here in the preseason, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. We don't have to go through none of the training camp, none of the weekly strategies, because all of that is going to be done with the tool. So we'll go ahead and jump into that now and show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys, so this is the My Franchise tool. A little bit of the edges are cut off. Like right here, you can't see my cursor. But you guys can pretty much see the bulk of what is happening. So this is the main hub that you have right here on the tool. Here, you're going to have top players. But, of course, standings and all that stuff is going to end up populating once we get into the regular season. The new stuff here, all the injury reports are going to be right here. You have the strength of schedule, which is right here, which is definitely cool to see. Um, kind of getting a glimpse. So you see, we are projected to have the 11th uh, hardest schedule this season. And then, of course, you go through schedule, through teams. You can click on your individual team. So we click on the Steelers. And now we have our hub for the Steelers. I've shown videos about this before. But just so you guys can kind of see it again, uh, what we're running with. I am using the New Orleans Saints playbook. So you see West Coast zone run is our offensive scheme. Base 3-4, we're using the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive playbook. Cap space, power rankings will update as we go. Um, all the cool stuff here, trading, free agency, all that stuff is here. We will go through that as we get a little bit closer. Um, the draft class is not going to be updated right now because we have not done it. But you can go through every single year, see the top draft picks. So you see here, we can pull up Caleb Williams, see his ratings, um, all that good stuff in this spot. You can go through each year previously, so... 2023, see Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, 2022, see Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson. So as you go through, you can always go through and see the overall, how they progress, see their uh, their stats. I don't know if they will have, they don't. They don't have any pre-franchise pre, uh, stats, one thing I had to think about, but they don't. So that stuff is pretty cool, though. League history, you'll be able to go through this every single season uh, once we get through multiple Years, But the main thing we want to talk about right now is the tool section. So if you ever run it, you can use this weather generator, which is cool, but we're not going to be playing any game season one, so I'm not too worried about the weather generator. But if you want to, you click on that, generate weather or confirm weather. It's going to tell you all the um, weather for the upcoming season, and it's going to change the in game based off of, you know, 10 years worth of data, which is pretty cool. All of these we will end up using, but... They have a nice little feature here. They always had this tool, the schedule here, but they also highlight it in red when you should be using it that week. So the first thing and the main thing is the progression tool. This is going to be all of our progression is going to be ran through this tool. It has its own algorithm on how it upgrades. The higher the dev, the higher of a chance you have to level up or get upgrades, but is not guaranteed. It's also based off the archetype. So if you are a speed running back, you're not going to be getting a ton of power uh, running back attributes. You can, but it's not very likely. Mainly if you're, uh, you know, a zone coverage linebacker, you're not going to get a bunch of run stopping linebacker ability. So you kind of want to get players based off the archetype. So for our first time, we are not in franchise mode. This is our first time. After this, we'll just run continue progression. The first time setup is going to run through the initial progression. And then, bam, you get the nice report right here. Every single player in the league. For us, to be fair, we just care about our Steelers. So we're going to go down to the Steelers. Who got the highest jumps? And here we go. So, Benton, Keanu Benton up to a 85 overall, plus 10, which is crazy. 
We also got Alex Highsmith, a plus six up to a 95. Now, remember, they're not going to be upgrading during the season. So this is pretty much to account for everything. Um, Nick Herbig uh, up to a 76. Roman Wilson goes up to a 76. Now, you guys know we got Roman Wilson to be a dog last time, but that doesn't exist this time. So 76 overall, a little bit lower to I think he got to like an 85 season one. Najee goes up plus four to an 87. Patrick Queen spent all that money on him. He goes up to an 88. That is great. Cole Holcomb goes up to an 82. Pat Fryermuth, 83. Joey Porter, 83. Only goes up one, but he still goes up. Jalen Warren, 82. Uh, Zach Frazier, 76, Scotty Miller, uh, 72, and then we get a plus one from Ryan Watts up to a 68, which means nobody else progressed. And when you look at our rookies, this is our rookie class right here. So Roman Wilson is going to be, you know, tied for the highest rated rookie with Zach Frazier at a 76 overall for both of them. That is definitely good. You can scroll to the right and you can see what actually improved. So his catching went up one, catching traffic went up four for Roman Wilson. Release went up five. Deep route running, medium route running also went up. Spectacular catch, probably one of the biggest things that you want up to an 87. That's very solid. That is very solid. Now, one thing that is disappointing, because you guys know we want to figure out this quarterback situation, is nothing at all from uh, <laughs> from Russell Wilson. But Justin Fields gets no overall boost. His, his awareness goes up one, and that is kind of disappointing. For a guy that's you again, we're going to go back and forth with, do we want to keep Justin Fields or not? He is not progressing. Does not mean he won't progress next season. He's still only, what, 25 years old, so there's still a chance he could develop, but that is a little bit disappointing right now um, that he did not get that any higher. So this is just a cool thing. Again, you can go around the NFL. You can see the highest jump was a plus 17 from Tank Bixby. What happened there? Tank Bixby is a dog now, a 90 overall. Wow, Grando went up to 87. So we got some guys, again, this should make every franchise feel different. Emmanuel Forbes, 87 overall. I mean, I don't even know who Tyler Lacey is, to be honest with you. He's a 79, got a plus 12. DeAndre Swift got a plus 11. So, I mean, when you go through the whole league, you're looking at, what, maybe 15, 20 guys that actually got plus 10s. Still pretty rare, um, but... It can happen. And, of course, we'll go through regression as we go through. So that is one thing that is definitely cool to see. Um, match schemes just helps the, the computer match schemes of their guys. That's all this is really essentially doing. Um, so if you are a outside pass rusher but you're now on the 4-3 team, you will switch to a defensive end. Vice versa, your DN, you're now on a 3-4 team. You will switch your position to an outside linebacker. That's all it's doing. It's going to do this for all the computer teams so they actually match what they want, and you can see the results here. So, for example, Noah Sewell, um, pass rusher, old position was a right outside linebacker. He's now playing defensive end, and his old overall 68 overall, new overall 72. Not a lot of changes, but you see the teams that have the different schemes um Aiden Hutchinson went to outside linebacker um also prayers out to Aiden Hutchinson um crazy injury that he sustained in real life but that's pretty much one little thing not a lot of teams or not a lot of players really just team wide right if you made that adjustment or not balanced roster is just going to move guys from left to right if you need to fill gaps in the roster so you see right here Devondre Campbell went from right to left um Davis Gaither right to left middle linebacker for to the left outside linebacker from Nicholas Murrow. So that's all that is doing right there. But this is changing it for the computer, which is very cool. Now, one cool thing now is the free agency lot, free agency lottery, right? Because we ran the franchise tool, so we know who was good and who's not cool. So you see a uh, good and who's not good. You see like David Bakhtiari, 86 overall. These are the teams that are interested in signing him. So you see, we are a team that is there. We can add teams. We can remove teams. I typically don't really touch it unless I really want a player. Then I'll add my team to that lottery mix. So, for example, you look at J.C. Jackson. Let's say, hey, let's, let's throw our hat in there. So now we add our team to the potential mix. Now, this is going to only be for 75 overall guys and, and above. So it's not going to be a lottery for guys underneath the – um, you can just go sign them 
whenever, right? So Hunter Renfro is there. All these guys, and this does not mean they're going to sign. And you see, we're going after a ton of wide receivers. The game thinks or the program thinks we need receiver help, which we kind of do, um, just some depth purposes. But we'll run the lottery, and we'll see who we sign. And you see, we missed out on Bakhtiari, or we missed out on J.C. Jackson. These are all the teams that have signed these players. You don't have to do anything. But we do get um, D.J. Humphrey, so we got a left tackle. We get Kadarius Toney, so we get a wide receiver. Um, some guys did not end up signing anywhere, like we said before. So Robbie Chosen, Paris Campbell, those guys did not go at all. But we did get a wide receiver in Kadarius Toney. So that is definitely cool. And then the last thing I do is just the jersey number fix. So retire numbers, duplicate numbers, um, those will be changed throughout the league. So that is pretty much everything that we have to do for preseason week one. Um, preseason week four, I can come back and do this. I could probably do this off camera. But really, we won't come back here until week eight when we do the actual trade block and the trade lottery, which kind of runs very similar to the free agency lottery. So we'll hop back into the game and simulate probably to week eight on um, trade down and kind of see where we are, how our team is looking. All right, guys, so we have simulated to week eight, and it's kind of like the last time we ran through this, which is kind of funny. We are four and three, so we're right there in the middle of the pack trying to make a playoff spot. Um, Baltimore is actually seven and no. They are going crazy. They're definitely going crazy uh, this season. So we are going to come out of here and go back to the franchise tool and see what we need to do at week eight. All right, guys, so we're back into my franchise tool. These are the things that we need to do for week eight. So we're going to fix injury reserve. You can technically do this every single week and make it so guys can actually come off of injury reserve after, you know, week after three weeks or the fourth week, you're eligible to come back instead of the game. I think it's a little bit longer or sometimes they don't even come off in the game. So now adjust trade block is it has its own logic for the trade block. So we look at the default trade block here. Tank Bigsby, for example, 90 overall guy. I don't really know if he should be, um, there we go. I had grades only on if he should be on the trade block. I'm not sure if he will stay on the trade block, but we'll go to adjust trade block here. And this should redo the trade block based off positions. Who's ahead of them. Um, what tags you have, the player has under 50 morale, a lot of things kind of go into that. So now we have the new trade block. So you see tank Bigsby is gone, but you see Stephon Gilmore, it's on the trade block. Garrett Bowles is on the trade block. James Conner, who has a rookie running back right behind him, is on the trading block, um, which is all pretty cool. All pretty cool to see for sure. So we can now run this trade lottery. So you're going to run this week eight or for agency week one. So again, um, you wouldn't have a chance. Now, it does tell you right here, high-performing quarterbacks, young stars, and OL with superstar dev traits are protected from trades. So you don't have to worry about them, you know, being traded. But players with trade target, bridge QB, uh, bridge player tags, they get added. We come here now, and you can pretty much adjust. So here we can have eight, only 86 overall guys be allowed in the lottery. Uh, what I like to do is kind of drop it down to 80 overall guys or higher who can now be in the lottery, but it's up to you. You can change that however you want. So you see here, Gilmore has a few interested teams. Uh, we are apparently a team looking at Garrett Bowles. We got to look at our left tackles. Let's actually look at our left tackles because we have been trying to get a left tackle this entire time. So again, you could pull up this depth chart for you. So we have DJ Humphreys. Yeah, we don't have a good left tackle, and I guess Humphreys isn't cutting it out for us. So I can understand why. We're trying to go out there left tackle. Maybe we can move one of them to right tackle because we definitely have a hole there as well. But anyway, we'll come back here. Um, take that back to an 80 overall. I don't know if you can go lower. You can go lower. We're going to keep it just at an 80 overall. Team's going to be interested there. No interest in James Conner. Um, Diggs, no interest really there. Or Xavier was from us. So we're going to hit run lottery. And bam, this is... The trade. So, Stephon Gilmore got traded to the Chiefs for a third and a seventh round draft pick. Kind of a lot for a 33-year-old cornerback, but they got it done. Rams get Garrett Bowles for a fourth and a sixth round draft pick. No team traded for James Conner. Uh, Diggs goes for a fifth and a seventh, and then no tra team trades for Xavier Woods. Now, one thing we do want to do now is go look at the trade block again. These are teams, if there's any players that you have, right, that you're interested in, 
go after them, right? Michael Thomas, if you have interest in him, David Andrews, Troy Hill. For us, we do want to trade a Landon Roberts. So everybody has their own way of kind of getting it done. I'm going to show you guys how we're going to go about trying to trade a Landon Roberts. So what I do to kind of make it fair and just my own way about it, you could go through and look at teams that could use an Atlanta Roberts. I just see him on the trade block, see if he actually has offers. Of course, we won't take the offers that they give us here, right? Because uh, they're trying to give us Amir White, uh, Smith, Marcetti, and Darius Davis with a bunch of draft picks. Atlanta Roberts probably is going to give us that much value. But you see, the Raiders are interested, the Giants, and the Chargers. So we'll go look at those three teams, and we'll make the trade in the franchise suit. All right, so the Raiders, Giants, and Chargers all had interest. We'll go through and just look quickly at how this, you know, the teams are looking so I can kind of see how real this could be, right? So the Chargers, Junior Colson, Denzel Perriman. So really, you look at Landon Roberts, he'll be the highest rated linebacker there. You probably take the place of Denzel Perriman, which is kind of tough. Maybe you just want to rock with Perriman. They're kind of close. Um, Junior Colson, the young guy, I can see why he'll get the start over them. We go look at the Raiders now and their defensive needs, right? Yeah, Roberts Spillane. You have Divine Diablo in the middle, but I don't see a huge need, to be honest. But they did they did have interest for whatever reason. And then we'll go look at the Giants, who have Bobby O'Karakee. Um, They're in the 3-4, so you kind of need that second middle linebacker. Uh, Michael McFadden may not be it. So for us, that's probably the, you know, the destination we prefer. Um, get him out of the conference entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to come, and we're going to do this live. We're going to come to the trade center for us. We are going to try to ship out a Landon Roberts. So we'll go. Am I passing? Here we go. We'll find our Steelers team. We'll add player, which we should probably just go to middle linebacker. I'm not sure what his value is. Not that much. His trade value is literally a zero. Literally a zero. We may not be able to move him at all. He may be completely stuck with us. That's why I do like that we're going through this because we probably can't get nothing at all. Um, but we're going to come down to the New York Giants. And his value is a zero. We'll look at draft picks. Is maybe a seventh rounder, a future seventh round. I don't know where we're going to get value from. I mean, a seventh rounder now is a 5.8. So that's kind of within the ballpark of how we could get this done. Because even a future seven is a, is a 20. I don't know why this seven, maybe the draft class is lower than the future seven. That, that That's pretty much all we could get. I don't think we could go a little bit higher. Let's just... Test out the logic here. Maybe a five, but that's at a 30. I don't know. I don't know if we could get that. Um, how do I take how do I take the other pick off? I don't know how he's supposed to take that off. So there we go. So just a fifth rounder. This might this may be breaking it. <laughs> oh, interest from us. It's probably not gonna work, though. We'll see. Trade has been denied. All right, there we go. So I'm glad it's working. Uh, we could override, but we're not going to use that here. So we can't get the fifth. Just the example there um, that is not going to work. So we'll come back here, and we'll just put in that seven, which is a five, and they may not take that. Trade has been denied. So we can't even get the seven at a 5.8, um, which means we probably can't get anything. We go look at the other teams now with the Raiders and the Chargers. I don't know if their seventh round pick has less value. A 13 here. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's any way we could trade them. So Landon Roberts, see, is a little bit tougher because he had value, right? He was getting multiple pieces, if, even with very hard trade difficulty. But here, uh, not, not so much. Not so much. We'll see if we could try to get this 11, but... No interest there. There we go. So they all got denied. So we wanted to trade Atlanta Roberts. We will not be able to trade him. So he is a Pittsburgh Steeler. But it's cool that that kind of just held up. Um, and you guys can see that it's a little bit more challenging. You're going to get, you know, not as much value. But on the flip side, to say you want to go get a player and he's on the trade block and he doesn't have, right, a ton of value, you now then have a chance really to go get him for a, a solid price, right? Like say for us, we wanted to look at um, a Sam Darnold, right? Because we need quarterback situation. Um, we're not going to do it right now, but we just want a quarterback situation, right? Just to see kind of where he, where he stands. So we'll go look at a Sam Darnold. 
He's at a 35 trade value. So for us to really get this trade to go through, you're looking at roughly a fifth fifth round pick. Because you can see a 33.5, 34.5. And then right here, they both have interest. So this is probably what we'll have to get done to go get a player like a Sam Darnold. Um, fifth round pick, which I think is definitely fair. I think it's a realistic trade, and um, I do like how they run uh, the trade calculator. So we're not going to make any trades for right now. I just want to show you guys how all this works as we're going through it. So from now on, I don't think we have to jump into this until staff week. So we'll go to the end of the regular season, see who won the Super Bowl, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, so we finished the season 8 and 9. Um, when you see here, the Super Bowl is the Chiefs versus the 49ers. Here is the playoff brackets, which, again, we did not make the playoffs, so we're not here at all. But the Ravens were the number one seed. They dropped to the number two seed in the Chiefs. And then the one and two seed met in the NFC Championship game with the 49ers and the Eagles. The 49ers won that matchup, which is definitely cool to see. A very solid season. We did not make the playoffs. Um, eight and nine, we, we were very close to that record um, the first time we ran through. So I could be a little off, but close enough. Um, here we go. MVP, Brock Purdy. Wow. Okay. Um, John Harbaugh, coach of the year. Um, offensive player of the year. You got Lamar Jackson, Quentin Williams, defensive player of the year. Offensive rookie of the year, Keon Coleman. Um, Liatu Latu um, winning defensive rookie of the year. Lamar Jackson, quarterback of the year. Best running back, Derrick Henry. Rasheed Rice, best receiver in the AFC. Okay. Quentin Nelson, best O-line. Greg Rousseau, best defensive lineman. TJ Watts, so there we go. Steelers representing right there. Best linebacker. Best DB, Cam Taylor Britt. Best kicker, Cameron Cameron Dicker. Here we go to the NFC side. Brandon Ayuk got that contract. One offensive player of the year. Micah Parsons, defensive player of the year. Kayla Williams gets offensive rookie of the year. Jared Verse, defensive rookie. Brock Purdy, best quarterback. Um, Saquon Barkley, best running back. Ayuk, best receiver. Um, Elton Jenkins, best lineman. Micah Parsons, best defensive lineman. Aiden Hutchinson. Now, remember, he made that switch to outside linebacker. He wins best linebacker. Um, Char Char Various, I don't know how I couldn't say that. Ward, best DB, um, best kicker, Eddie Pinero. So, here we go. Those are the awards. We'll quickly look at what our team did with the stats before, you know, we simulate gets to the very um, to the offseason. So Justin Fields actually had a solid year, 30 touchdowns, but he did have 18 interceptions on the season. Russell Wilson, three touchdowns, one interception. Um, Najee Harris, a little under 1,000 yards rushing at 925. Justin Fields, though, did have 300 yards on the ground. Remember, we have the New Orleans Saints playbook, just for references here. George Pickens, 74 catches, 1,100 yards, and 14 touchdowns. A good season. Roma Wilson. Not as good as the first time around, but 72 catches, 831. Pat Fryermuth had 82 catches. Kadarius Toney, we were able to win him in the free agency lottery, and he provided us with 62 catches. I'm not mad at that at all. Defensive side, um, Patrick Queen, 110 tackles. Alex Highsmith with 77. Um, Cam Hayward, 14 TFLs. Highsmith with 10. And then we had 16 and a half sacks from TJ Watt and 13 sacks from Alex Heisman. Now remember, TJ Watt is a 98 overall X factor. And then when we look at uh, Alex Highsmith, if it'll take us back to the same screen, he is a 95 overall headers rusher. So really when it comes to getting after the quarterback, we have that on lock with this team. Now I don't know what, what went wrong the rest of the, the season, but we definitely have that unlocked. Dante Jackson had four interceptions. Landon Roberts, who we tried to trade, who has zero trade value, had three interceptions. Um, Joey Porter Jr. got one. Deshaun Elliott got one. So that is that season for us. So we should be right in the middle of the pack when it comes to um, draft picks. But let's go ahead and advance through the Super Bowl. I must go with the Chiefs. Chiefs Niners pick, pick one now. I'm going with the Chiefs. The Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Um, let's go to the recap, and wow, I'm wrong. The 49ers are your Super Bowl champions. Brock Purdy, Super Bowl MVP, 42-24, to 24, so a decisive, decisive win. And then right here, Offensive Player of the Year, Brandon Ayuk, Micah Parsons, Defensive Player, Keon Coleman, Rookie, and Jared Verse, Defensive Rookie of the Year. So 
Now, we are at Staff Week. So, again, we have to come back to the tool, save the stats, and I'll show you guys some of the cool stuff we could do here. Uh, as for upgrade players, again, most of our progression is done um, through the progression tool. But you do get, you know, some XP being gained, things of that nature. So, Zach Frazier is going to get an upgrade. We'll just let the computer upgrade that. That is really the only upgrade that we had at that moment. So, still not a lot of movement from XP. But they can still get it. Um, let's look at retirements real quick before we hop in over there. Case Keenum is gone. Uh, from us, Russell Wilson retired. So we were able to keep Russell Wilson as a quarterback season two last time. This time, we will not have that option. So we really just need to sign Justin Fields or don't have a quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is going to retire after one season. My boy Mo is going to retire after one season um, in the franchise, of course. Kirk Cousins. Signed that big contract, and now he is going to retire. So that's going to be very interesting. Mostert's going to retire. Um, Stephon Gilmore, so he got traded for. They gave up two picks, I believe, and then he, he he's gone. But he was able to play in the Super Bowl with the Chiefs. Um, Levante David is going to retire. And then now we have free agents. I don't know if there's any big-name free agents that decided to walk. Jason Peters is going to walk after 21 seasons. Julio Jones is going to walk after 14 seasons. Jimmy Graham is going to retire as well. Brandon Bolden. And there you go. So those are the retirements. Randall Cobb as well. Got to talk about my, my fellow Kentucky Wildcat. So we'll go ahead. We'll save this and we'll hop back into the tool. And I'll show you guys what, what we do staff week. This is how the franchise tour looks once you get to the offseason. You see the Super Bowl champions right here with the 49ers. You see the, the top prospects in the draft class. So cornerbacks is up there. You see a John Whitaker at quarterback. Um, you can also click on it, and you can see um, a nice little rundown of what they are. So he's a good athlete, constantly wins with legs outside the pocket when needed. So, yeah, he can scramble a little bit. We don't have any of the combine grades yet, so it's all locked, but – this is a nice, probably maybe a little bit easier way to kind of look through if you kind of like spreadsheet type of formats here. Um, the news, all this stuff is still kind of here. Upcoming free agents is here as well. So see Michael Carter, Chase Claypool. But of course, we have to actually go through uh, signings to see what changes. So this is where things are a little bit different, right? So the first thing you want to do that I want to do is export season data. So this is going to keep it so you can go back and see all the stats from every single player. So they have been exported. Um, you don't have to worry about that. You can go back and look at previous seasons, which is cool. Uh, the next thing I like to do, I don't know if it's a specific order to tell you the truth. I'm just telling you guys how I do it. So <laughs> uh, maybe we should have went down. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I like to remove all injuries right here. Uh, so we'll go through removing all injuries. And now we will work on the stats matter tool. So I'll read it from Batum. This tool makes stats relevant when it comes to progression and regression at the end of the season. Every position is judged based on key statistical rankings. The rank requirements varies depending on the overall. When it comes to overall regression, only starting quality quarter uh, players that have been in the league for longer than three plus years are affected. So if you're in the first three years in the league, you would not regress after the third year. So going into year four, you are eligible to start regressing if you're not performing on the field. And this also has a dev trait progression, uh, progression and regression for offensive of line. It's recommended that you run it during staff week, which is where we are. So we go ahead, run the stats matter tool, apply changes. It's going to do the rating edits and it's going to come back to us with pretty much what it did. So you see some in the background while it's doing it, um, but it's going to do every player. So this one definitely takes a little bit of time, but here we go. So Brock Purdy, he improved 91 to 94 overall. I mean, the man just won the MVP. Um, so you definitely expect a progression there. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, one rookie uh, uh, offensive player of the year. He goes up to a 98. Now we're looking at Debo Samuel. He's dropping a little bit, 90 to 88. Now this is really also on top of what the game is going to regress a little bit as well. So it kind of gets crazy here. George Kittle is going to drop 97 to a 91 overall. Um, you get an improvement of start a superstar right there. So for us, though, that's all cool. We want to go down to our Steelers. Go down to our Steelers, and here we go. So Najee jumped from an 87 to a 91 based off of that season's performance, which he didn't look that great to me. He had 900 rushing yards, but we're going to take it. I'm not going to complain at all. Uh, George Pickens, 85 to 89. Deshaun Elliott, 78 to an 83. 
Dante Jackson, 77 to a 79. Joey Porter, 83 to an 85. Um, our kicker, Boswell, drops from an 80 to a 76. So we'll take that there. But you see, you see regressions right here. Like Justin Jefferson dropped from a 99 to a 95. So you really need to keep performing with these players, um, which is a cool thing to see. Definitely cool thing to see. Reward guys that played because you don't get XP. So reward guys that play good. Now we're going to go to motivation generator. This will change motivations based on more realistic motivation that they will want. So that's all this is doing here. Um, you won't have, you know, quarterbacks wanting to play with a franchise quarterback. We're not going to see that. Right. Um, and then clear cap space tool. Um, you can run it right here. This is probably the best time to run it. You can also run it free. So we want this is going to allow the computer to make restructures, uh, free up cap space so they're not in the hole and make smarter decisions, essentially. So we like to run this. So we'll clear cap space, and it's going to clear cap space for teams if they need cap space cleared. If they don't need cap space cleared, they're not going to do a whole lot. But you do see players release here uh, because of cap space reasons. So you see the savings that they're going to take there. Um, is going to give you pretty much everything. So you see a couple of restructures. So Josh Allen, right, because he's a big-time guy, his contract has been restructured. Old contract, 90, uh, 47 million salary, 12 million bonus for the year. Now it's going to be 1 million salary, 24 million bonus. So we're going to pay that up front. You're not going to cut Josh Allen, so why not restructure him, right? Um, Von Miller, a little bit more questionable. Him getting restructured, right, because now you're guaranteeing his contract. Um, but you see it's going to go through a lot of players. You're going to see some restructures here. A lot of players are going to be released due to salary cap reasoning, um, which is just cool to see. So. This is all the teams once you get through it. That, that, that's what that tool does. And that is everything that we need to do now. Again, once we get to free agency week one, we'll update the trade block and we'll update the trade lottery. But um, y'all re-sign up. We got to come back to match schemes and balance rosters. I don't think we need to show y'all that, but we're going to go to uh, re-sign and we're going to make, you know, our, uh, our decisions on who we want to bring back. All right, so we're now here ready to negotiate. We have $74 million in cap space. And you see, again, Justin Fields, he is looking for a five-year, $77 million deal, which is not bad. 26 years old. We didn't keep him last time. But do we keep him this time and hope and hope that with that star development, he could actually progress a little bit. He is 26 years old, so I'm not sure how much he will progress. That is a tough situation. That is a tough situation. Let's also quickly, if we can, because I don't know the quarterbacks. I have not looked at this draft class really at all. Like, at all. Um, it's not as fruitful. Bro, you have a guy projected top Five that could be round one or two talents, a two or three talent, and then you have undrafted free agents. Nah, that's tough. That's tough. We could let we could let him walk and talk to Fields again in free agency and kind of see what quarterbacks are there in general, and maybe even get them at a more reasonable price. And I think that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure how long of, you know, what's the list of teams lining up for Justin Fields at a 77 overall. It may be, it may be there, but I don't know. Now, Najee Harris, we're going to try to bring him back. Three-year deal. We'll give him what he's looking for. That's just bump it up just a tad. Let's see. He'll be number one on the depth chart. He's not close to home, so I'm not sure. So, yeah, he wants to get out of there. Let's look at what Justin Fields' motivation is. No income tax. He's going to take the most money and the depth chart. So we're going to always be have a chance to come back and get him. Um, Jalen Warren has no interest in coming back. Um, James Daniels, he does have interest in coming back. We have interest in him. I like James Daniels. He has a lot of interest. So we'll just offer him the regular deal. There we go. So he's going to come back. We're, we're able to bring him back, which is a good sign. Dante Jackson doesn't want to come back. Van Jefferson doesn't want to come back. Terrell Edmonds, as the number two, could we have Deshaun Elliott? I don't know if we want to give him the two-year deal, but let's readdress him in free agency. He could be a guy we could go back after. Dan Moore is gone, but that left tackle position for us has been so bad that really, I don't know if we should go after him. Uh, we don't have a lot of guys that want to come back. Landon Roberts must have heard that we wanted to trade him because he does not want to come back. Uh, Nate Herbig, 
doesn't want to come back. Louder milk doesn't want to come back. I mean, nobody wants to. I mean, we have 55 overall players telling us that they don't want to come back. This is crazy. This is crazy. Kadarius Tony had a great season with us. He doesn't want to come back. DJ Humphreys does. I don't know about at $6 million, but we are going to go in the, into the free agency with a lot of cap space. A ton of cap space. A lot of players were released. Let's see if some guys want to, you know, come play for us. All right, so we're at uh, free agency week one. So we're going to adjust the trade block again. Just like we, we did uh, for the trade deadline. We'll go back to trade lottery. And we will, you know, simulate preseason or offseason trades. And you see right here, Zach Martin, a bunch of teams. Terry McLaurin is on the is on the trade block. Really, for us, there's they didn't assign us anybody. There we go. Colton Miller, another left tackle. Because, of course, why not, right? Why not run the lottery before free agency? And that way, these teams know what they're looking for in free agency. So, Zach Martin going to the Patriots for a third and a fifth. Terry McLaurin, a great deal, in my opinion, going to the Atlanta Falcons that already have a lot of talent, but a third and a sixth round pick there. Uh, Kendall Fuller going for a four and a five. Uh, Jonathan Jones going to the Raiders for two fifth round picks. Um, Andrew Van Ginkle going to the Titans for two fifth round picks. They're getting a nice outside linebacker there. And then Colton Miller went to the Jets for just one fourth round draft pick. So now we'll go look at the actual trade block. And it's very small in the offseason. It's not like, you know, once you get into the season. And none of these guys, I think we want to go after. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into the free agency and hope that we can land some talent there. All right, so this is the free agent list. So Najee Harris, the top guy there, he has 10 teams interested. Tyron Smith, we need a left tackle. He is there with four teams interested. David Bakhtiari has no teams interested. Maybe that is the guy we go after for left tackle. Uh, we do have a lot of cap space. Ryan Kelly is there as well, even though I feel like we're fine at that position. Rasul Douglas, uh, Matthew Judon. Uh, D hop is out there. Cam Akers is out there. If we need to go get another running back, maybe a Cam Akers type is where we go. Jalen Warren has interest in coming back, which is funny because he had no interest before, but maybe because Najee was there. Now he knows he could be number one on the depth chart. So he has interest there. Cam Akers. And you see the motivations for a lot of these guys are a lot more realistic. A lot of them because the top guys want to be number one on the depth chart, which is realistic, right? That's what you kind of want to see for a lot of these guys. Um, and a lot of the guys that don't have interest, they'll be number two on the depth chart, right? So I do like how the motivations um, change uh, with the tool. But let's go look at what's most important for us right now, and that's quarterbacks. We don't have one. So Justin Fields there, there are eight teams interested. I didn't know how many teams would be interested in him. Eight, apparently. Derek Carr is out there. Kenny Pickett bringing him back. Deshaun Watson got released with no team interested, that could be a guy that maybe we could try to bring back. Doesn't have a lot of interest, but you don't have a lot of teams, bro. So maybe a one-year deal with Deshaun Watson if we strike out, of course. Jameis Winston is there with no teams interested as well. So we have a couple of options, but no great quarterback. Jameis Winston didn't play in this system before, so that would be good. But let's go ahead. <sighs> and let's, let's offer him. Five years is a little, a little much. But at 17 million, that's not awful, right? Let's take us to 31 years old with Justin Fields. Let's just make the offer. We're not going to change it. If it's not the best, it's not the best. And it looks like the Titans are interested in him. That's an interesting one, not going to lie. Um, Najee Harris had a solid season. But for us with the Saints, if we get a little bit more of a versatile running back that can make plays catching as well, um, that'll be great. Or we could split it up, right? Have a, a, a pure third down back and have a, a pure runner. I mean, Najee is good. He looks like he might even be the best catcher out here, right? Besides uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So, I mean, that could be a situation where maybe, maybe we try to bring him back. Yeah, and I think that, I think that's what we're going to do again. We're going to send him the offer. To bring back Najee, there is 10 teams interested. We we bumped up the salary last time. 
Um, let's bump it up to 6.5 there. So three years, can we just make this an even three years, 35.1. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a running back. I think that is a very strong offer. We are right there with the bills. We'll see how that one plays out. Um, looking at the wide receivers. I mean, we could probably use some more, right? We have George pick Roman Wilson, Calvin Austin. So we, we could use a third, but maybe that's more of a draft a draft situation for us. And we don't need to go get a guy right now. I mean, we have some guys we come down here that have interest that we could try to get maybe later on in free agency, but that's not a guy that we need to use one of our five negotiations for. Um, left tackle is though. And there's some younger guys, right? Like a Jedrick Willis jr. Ah, uh, I mean, I prefer, Pass blocking out of my left tackle, even though if you could, you know, be a more agile guy with the zone running that we're trying to do here, I'm fine with that as well. But the pass blocking is okay. Not not really, you know, the finesse guy. Or we could just go after the David Bakhtiari and call it a day and then get maybe a rookie left tackle and see if he could progress. But he has no interest right now. So, you know what? Let's take the offer. Not the offer. Let's um look at. Can I pull up his player card from here? I can. All right. Let's see exactly. This will be a little bit easier for me to see. I try to look at it the other way. Uh, but he has the ninety two strength, which you do like. He has a seventy three speed, so he can get out there and be an agile type of tackle. He's just not great at the finesse pass blocking. Not a great run blocker, but I mean he's solid. He's solid. He has good awareness. He has that star dev. Maybe he could improve a little bit more. Let's go ahead and send him an offer then. Uh, I'm fine with the two-year deal. Let's give him the two years at $7 million a year. That's a, that's a strong offer. That's a strong offer. We are on top. There we go. That's a strong offer right there. And maybe we don't have to worry about it too much. Even though David Bakhtiari does have a mentor tag, that could have helped. But that's $16 million a year he's looking for. Um, really, I'm going off of what we did last time, off of memory, what we needed exactly. We could use a younger, you know, defensive end. But it's not, it's not a necessity. It's definitely not a necessity. But for me, I like one that could the block shade. We have a Jadavion Clowney. He might be too light for us there. He could be a guy that we could get a pass rusher, but our pass rushers are really good. So maybe a Draymond Jones type, the best block shedder out here. He'll be number one on the depth chart over Larry Onjanjobi. So 28 years old. Let's send him an offer. I like that. Uh, Us and the Bucks are tied. Hopefully he makes the right decision there. Right, uh, D tackle, we are fine with Keanu. Uh, we're going to be fine at right end. I think we're fine, really, at defense, outside linebacker, middle line. I mean, really, all of these positions we'd be okay at. Cornerback, we could definitely, definitely use some help. Right, because when you look here, um, we have Joey Porter Jr., and that's about it. <laughs> that is about it. Uh, we need some guys that have interest, and we need guys that could cover in zone, right? Because we're going to run a lot of zone. Which is why speed isn't, you know, crazy important for us. But we're gonna need a guy like a Cameron Dantzler Jr. or Senior, right? That has his own coverage, that doesn't have interest, but doesn't have other teams offering him. Because trying to compete with, you know, teams that are offering when they have no interest is gonna be tough. Emmanuel Mosley is probably the guy we could go get for now, and then we could circle back and try to go get another guy, right? Only asking for $3 million a year. He's older. A bridge gap corner. Why not send him the offer? And that is our five offers. So let's go ahead and let's evaluate here. Did we sign everybody? Uh, we re-signed Najee. So check. We get Najee in. Jedrick Willis signs. Emmanuel Mosley signs. Um, I think we missed out on Justin Fields, who is a Jet. So they lose Aaron Rodgers. And he goes there, which is crazy again, because that was not the highest offer, right, on the sheets. But he signs with the Jets, um, and that's good for Justin Fields. We will, you know, pivot our our focus, right, because 
We just need a quarterback. We don't need nothing crazy. We just need a quarterback, man. Um, and I think maybe coming after one of these guys late in free agency, right? They have no offers. Uh, we could get them hopefully significantly cheaper. I don't think we go after Deshaun Watson now, who would have been a solid pickup for us, but he has an offer. He has an offer. Mac Jones has two offers. Desmond Ritter does not. So maybe that's a guy we could bring in at $5 million a year. But I also feel like we could get him a lot cheaper as well. So let's just let's hold off for now, and we'll come back later um, in free agency, and we'll try to get some of these guys on the low. All right, so after free agency week one, we did sign Najee. We signed Reggie Gillen. We needed a fullback. We signed Jedrick Willis, and we signed Emmanuel Mosley. Um, we also missed out on the defensive end. I think it was... Was it hand? Who did we? No, we went up to Draymond Jones. Um, he went with the Colts. So that was the offer that he took there. A two-year, about what, $21 million deal. Is what it is there. Tyron Smith goes to the Bills. David Bakhtiari goes to the Jets. The Jets are trying to load up right now, right? Ryan Kelly goes to um, the Texans. Douglas goes to the Cowboys. Judon goes to the Falcons. Now, Justin Reed goes to the Bucks. D-Hop goes to the Bills. So you see quite a lot of movement. Cam Akers goes to the um, Cardinals. I feel like they didn't need him. Jalen Warren would lose him to the Chargers. Sutton goes to the Jets as well. Bobby Wagner going to the Lions. So you see some of the top guys and where they went here. Um, but uh, Jadavion Clowney goes to the Jaguars. But for us, we're going to just stand pat, and we're going to play the long game. You see quarterbacks that are still available. Sam Darnold has offers now. Um, Derek Carr is available. Kenny Pickett is available. Um, Jameis Winston is available. So we're not looking at great quarterback options, but maybe we can land one of these guys or see if the trade block updates um, when we get into preseason and try to get one of them there. All right, guys. So after week two of free agency, the only guy we was able to sign is Derek Carr. So we bring in Derek Carr, a one-year, $7 million deal. No teams were interested in him. He was asking for $8 million. We were able to shave a $1 million off of that deal. Um, but that's where we're sitting at now. So at least we have a quarterback. But other than that, I mean, there's they're just not that many, right? Sam Darnold went back to Minnesota on a three-year deal. So, I mean... You see the contract these guys were signing for. Deshaun Watson goes to the Giants on a three-year deal. So we weren't going to offer, you know, any multi-year deal, any of these quarterbacks. So we're penny pinching, uh, but we're able to get Derek Carr. Hopefully that could be a bridge cap quarterback. We do have an offer out for James Jameis Winston, a one-year, I believe we're at $3 million for the deal we offered him. So we'll see if he ends up taking that. But uh, that'll be super low ball Michael Carter, but he has no other interest from, like, no other team. So yeah, that's kind of where we sit. Um, and we'll see if we can land one of them. All right, so free agency is done. This is the final guys we're able to sign. So we brought in Najee Harris on that big three-year deal. Hopefully, he does not regress anytime soon, and he could keep rocking for the next three seasons. Spent way more than I was expecting on him. Reggie Gilliam, we brought him in at fullback. We were able to bring in Michael Carter as a very cheap minimum, vet minimum deal um, at running back to see if he could pan out as a backup. Xavier Howard, we were able to bring him in last minute. No interest, but no no teams were offering him. Got him on a one-year, $3 million contract, which I think is solid. Um, Jedrick Willis, we've seen that deal happen. I think that two-year, $14 million deal is solid. Emmanuel Mosley, a one-year, a little over three, about $3.5 million contract uh, for Emmanuel Mosley. Derek Carr, one-year, $7 million. And then Jameis Winston, one-year, $3 million. So we got two quarterbacks. We got a left tackle. Uh, we got, you know, some okay cornerbacks. No corners were real interested in us. That was like the big thing of free agency. And now when we take a look at our depth chart, so you guys can see kind of where we stand with our lineup. Let's go ahead and reorder that as well. Um, this, is where we, this is how we look. So we need some more depth as a wide receiver position. I definitely plan on drafting one and then if not signing a couple guys um, after the draft. At running back spot, I think we're okay-ish. Um, bring in Michael Carter there. That's fine. Um, two quarterbacks there. Offensive line, I think, looks very, very solid for us, too. Um, looking on the defensive end, I think we're very special when it comes to the, the defense. Um, besides the second cornerback position, and maybe you could you could nitpick about our left end, but, I mean, Benton, Dog, Cam Hayward still holding down. We got two middle linebackers, two probably of the best outside pass rushers out there. So, 
I think we look good, man. I think we look good. And um, we'll probably add another depth piece at strong safety, maybe even another cornerback. But we're going to the draft. I'm very unprepared about for the draft because I have not done any scouting. I'm sitting down just trying to get all of this done so we can get started. Uh, so I'm not sure how this draft is going to go, but we'll see. All right, so here we go. It is time to start the NFL draft. Like I said, very unprepared here. Just trying to go through this as quickly as possible. But let's run through the first couple of picks so we kind of see. It should be cornerback coming off the board um, pretty early. So, yeah, the first pick is going to be a quarterback. I forgot we had to go through all this stuff, man. Second pick is also going to be a, a quarterback. Oh, wow, they go with Whitaker. I was not expecting that one. He was a little bit later. I don't think he was the number one quarterback. Um, on the board. So maybe he was, maybe he could have been the number one quarterback. None of these quarterbacks look good to me um, at all. Uh, <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter, but the Titans, they try to go get Justin Fields. They could not get him. So now they go get another quarterback um, here at defensive tackle going third to the uh, Patriots. Fourth pick. Um, Gerald McClain, a defensive end. And then we'll do this last pick here just to see the top five, just because we have no interest. The Browns go quarterback. So there we go. We'll go to our pick now. You see some of the draft picks there. Um, so you guys can read it uh, kind of where everybody went. But for us, we got to figure out where to go at 16. So there's a corner with top five talent. I mean, I think immediately – Kind of have an idea where I want to go <laughs> with this pick. Uh, we need a cornerback. And yeah, he could have just fell into our arms. Our uh, projection top five. Okay, so I don't know about the talent. But catching A, zone coverage A, aggressive ball hawk. I mean, four three four two five forty. We don't even need speed for a zone guy, but I mean... I don't know what happened. Injury, maybe. Maybe injury concerns. I don't know where things went wrong, but, I mean, I'll tell you this. Walter Irons, um, congratulations. You are a Pittsburgh Steeler. I don't have to go to the rest, bro. He fell to us at 16. We'll see how he is as a player. We'll watch him walk out and shake the commissioner hand at 16th overall pick. I think that is a gift. Him being able to fall to us, that is a, that is a gift. That is a gift that I am going to take every single time. Walter Irons, man. Irons with the Steelers. I mean, that makes sense. Third and true value. We got him at 16. Speed, speed, speed. Good instincts to read and diagnose plays. Quick to digest and respond in zone coverage. What a draft pick. Hidden dev, 95 speed. Man. What a pick. How did he fall to us at 16? I do not know. I do not know, but we're going to take it. Now, there are some, a pair of uh, wide receivers, and I don't know if they went. One of them went Tyrell Brown at 37, and I don't know if the other, uh, other wide receiver went. So if he's not gone, there is a wide receiver um, that we do want. There we go. It was Andrew Clayton, three to four um, talent. So I don't know. There was two of them. I brought both of them in for like the visit. Maybe Tyrell was the better wide receiver. But he was 6'3", 218. Definitely had the size there. Uh, now I'm not. Now I'm second guessing. He has the speed there. The acceleration isn't that great. He could jump 40-inch vertical, elite strength. The injuries are F. That is definitely questionable there. But I mean... The route run, everything else is solid. I mean, deep route running is bad. Or medium route running is bad. Ah, man. Or do we go, is there any left ends available at this spot? A couple of round two to three. So, I mean, maybe we could try to slide back and grab one of these guys. Let's just go with the receiver. I know the... The true talent isn't there right now, but he has a great frame. He's 22 years old. To see if he could develop a uh, physical wide right receiver. Andrew Clayton, bro, welcome to the Steelers. I'm with it, man. I'm with it. I think it's a solid pick. It's going to be a reach. It's not going to get a good grade, but we hit such a home run round one. I mean, we're feeling it in the war room. 
We're clapping it up. We're enjoying the draft pick. He's at home. He got the cap. He's ready to go. He's ready to play with the Steelers. 95 is true talent. We got him at 48. Hands made of glue. I like that. Strong hands to make through contact. Excellent technique in running short routes. He has hidden devs. I mean, hey. 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 We're going to clap it up for ourselves. I think that was a solid pick. Solid, solid pick. Now, I know we have like seven seventh round picks. So once we get there, we're going to just be blindly picking. We're kind of blindly picking at this point. Um, but we see some tight ends here. 23 years old. Ah, uh, man. Let's circle back to that left end spot. I know we wanted to be responsible there. Now we're looking at around three or four guys. Speed rusher, not going to help us at 263. We want a run stopper. There's really not, not any left. We look at safety just for a backup safety. Um, you have a zone guy. We have our run support guy. But, I mean, his zone coverage is awful. But he could tackle. He has hit power. I mean, he doesn't look very good. He doesn't look very good, but let's... Let's reach, I think, unless we can get him a little bit later. I don't think we need another corner, especially man-to-man -man guys. They're pretty much all man-to-man -man guys until we get late in the draft. Let's see if there's a right end that we can move to left end. Maybe. We have a power rusher there. I'm fine with a power rusher. We just need a big body. Um, but B... Uh, but he has that F block shed. We can't do that. We cannot do that. Uh, we don't need another defense to tackle, but he's a speed rush. Can we move him to end? Number in that 3-4. I mean, I like that finesse. I mean, he he's unique. Let's draft Curtis Nelson, and let's plan on moving him to left end for us. Because uh, really, with those 3-4, you're essentially getting, what, three defensive tackles. But that's a unique blend uh, with that size being a, sp uh, a speed rusher. With average block shedding, I really like the block shedding to clog up those running lanes, but we'll give him a chance. I mean, he could just be a depth guy at the end of the day. 102 true talent, drafting him 80. Needs to improve his strength, struggles to get off blocks. So, But he is hidden dev. So we'll see how that, how that works out for us there. Um, but we're, we are drafting blind. Like I said before, we are drafting blind at this point. So really, any solid pick is okay with me. So now here, round four. Round four. Um, none of these quarterbacks, man. <laughs> none of these quarterbacks. We are we are a little in a in a rough spot when it comes to these. Uh, when it comes to these quarterbacks right now. I don't think we need another wide receiver. You really know tight ends. I mean, we are we are thin at even blindly drafting. We may gotta circle back to those strong safeties. If they're even still there. There is. Okay, both of them are still there. So let's go with the run support guy and Brenton Oden, 21 years old, a little bit younger. Better tackler. Hopefully he can just develop the zone coverage part of his game over time. But really, he, if he can go into the box as well, we have a starting strong safety. So this guy is not going to start. It's just a guy that we hope can develop over time. It's kind of the plan and the idea here. But you see him excited. I like, you know, see the players excited to be a stealer. 145. So we are striking out a little bit uh, when it comes to these players. Normal dev. Our first non um hidden dev guys. So at least we know everybody's going to be a star, but we expect, you know, this late that some guys are not going to, you know, they're not going to pan out. Um, I was saying that maybe any of these guys up here higher on the board who fell could, you know, be a little hidden gem force, maybe as even a kick returner, right? Four, four speed. You can't do nothing else. Like, he is bad. But he's a playmaker. He has that B-spin move. I'm trying to find his return rating. They don't show his return rating. 
This got to be strictly for a kick return. Zach Kursky, man. He fell um, to round five. Purely as a kick returner. If he has a return rating, I don't know. I mean, we're feeling good about it. We're feeling good about it. I mean, we got a guy that fell. He's feeling good about it. So, you know, we'll see. Let's see what he comes in at. 142 in true value. I mean, we got him right where we, you know, right where he's supposed to be. Faster on tape. So he's not as quick. 91 speed, 95 or so. But if he could be a return man for us, um, they said, you know, he has some moves, some spin moves there. So I don't know. That's just, that just that is definitely a um a fill your roster type of pick when you're drafting for special teams. That's definitely telling you right there. We do not <laughs> we do not care too much at this point. It's a pass coverage outside linebacker, which is not gonna help us right now. We got another power rushing defensive end that we don't have anything really scouted for. Ah man, we are we are in a tough spot. We are in a tough spot with this draft. It is not that great, guys. It is not that great. Um said he's a receiving back. What's his catching looking like? I mean, he has solid catching. There we go. Let's go get a receiving back. I don't care his 40. It's solid. It's good enough. <clears throat> he could be the backup receiving back to Cordero Patterson. Or he could maybe be better than Cordero Patterson. Who knows? Um, why is Roger Goodell walking out at this point? We won't skip all that. 135 and true talent. So we got a good, good pick there. Uh, show soft hands out the backfield. Dangerous return, man. So maybe that's the return guy. <laughs> maybe he's the return man after all. Who knows? Who knows? All right. So the next user pick. Now we have a bunch of picks here in the seventh round. We have what? One, two, three, four, five picks to start trading some of these. We did this last time to see if we could pick up. Yeah, let's pick up a six round pick. Um, a lot of guys want this pick. Or a lot of teams want this pick. We'll send it to the Bears. Out of the conference there, which is fine with us, you know. Um, Let's send this one. We can maybe make the last three picks. Let's send this one. We're not going to send it in division. Let's send this one to the Bills. So we pick up those two picks, and now let's just draft um, what these last three picks here in the seventh round. We're, we're literally going to be guessing. We are literally guessing this entire time. All right. I feel like we don't need another receiver. This is a middle linebacker, a field general linebacker. He could catch a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he, he does not look good at all. Uh, F his own coverage. Yeah, he is not. <laughs> he, he is not it. I'll tell you that. Um, Burton, not, are any of these guys really good? Probably not, you know, but we're just hoping here. We're hoping maybe we can land somebody. Another zone corner with only C zone. There's nobody there that's going to help us at this point. Tackling, play right. That's outside linebacker. For these middle linebacker guys, nobody. I mean, maybe he is the best guy. Let's just go with him. Seventh round pick. I said he's not it. He's not going to be good, but hey, let's just go with him now. 320. Okay, so I should have trusted my instincts. My instincts said he sucked. We draft him anyway because we don't have anybody scouted. Or no plan. We have no plan at this point. We are literally just, we are just going. We are, is there a kicker? Is there a guy that can kick out here? That's how desperate we are. Is there a guy that can kick? He has A accuracy. Does he have a leg? Don't they have kick power? Decent kick power. I don't, I don't. Do we have an unbelievable punter? With some crazy, this guy has punt power. Marginal. Yeah, these guys, there, there is nothing. There is literally nothing here. There's that pass coverage linebacker. But he can't get off a block at all, neither. 
pass coverage outside linebacker. Can we move him to middle linebacker? Maybe. All right, let's move him to middle linebacker. That's going to be the move there. 343. Yeah, we are we are striking out here late late in this uh in this draft. All right. Last pick for us. We're going to make I don't want to trade all of our sevens, right? <clears throat> Do we take a flyer? That's three guys. Here's a power rusher right here. We'll just go with him. Another defensive end. We'll see if any one of them get lucky when we when we run the uh, the progression tool. Because <laughs> right now, that's, that's the only luck we can get. But the first couple of picks, I thought were solid. The end got very, very, very shaky. Very shaky. So we look at our guys that we have here. Oh, wow. Walter Iron, 79 overall. We hope he develops. We hope he develops. That's a pick. That's a pick right there. 80 zone coverage. We needed a cornerback bad. He fell to us. I like the aggressive play ball tendency as well. All right, that's a good pick there. Andrew Clayton, I mean, a guy they said was projected later. He's at least star dev. I mean, 71 overall. He could be a guy that, that could develop into something. I like that draft pick there. For us, even in D tackle, we want to move him to... Um, left end. Let's actually do that now before we run the progression tool. Just move him to left end. That's where we want him at. Let's see what type of left end he is. 70 overall as a left end, which is fine. Still speed rushing guy. It wasn't going to change too much in this 3-4. 77 finesse move. Only 85 strength, though. The black shine only 68. So I don't think he will start for us right away. But you never know. He could develop. Other than that, uh, a couple of misses, man. A couple of misses. But, hey, if they end up being good, I'm, I'm going to take it. So, Kursky, what did his return rating end up being? Am I missing his return? 76, so he's not having a real return, man, for us. Uh, we did get the running back, 68 overall. More of a, a, a pass-catching guy. We knew that when we got him in here. But his return rating is 89. So he got at least return kicks for us. So we got some type of value out of, out of Reggie Parnell. So let's um advance to the next week. I'll uh, you know update attributes later. We'll advance to the next week. Once we get to um, week one, we can actually run the progression tool. And then we can go from there. We'll see how you know things end up end up for us and the rest of the draft. But um let's hop into the franchise tool. And let's see how these rookies and really the rest of the players end up progressing. All right, so here we go. Time to load up the progression tool again. Like I said, this time we just continue progression. And we will see. We will see what happens, man. Hopefully we, we get lucky here. We get a couple of guys that hit for sure. Let's go down to the Steelers. And here we go. So we get a plus seven for Walter Iron. So our rookie cornerback is going to come in at an 86 overall. That is that is great. Jumping goes up. Man coverage went up six. His zone coverage. Um, I don't know if we passed that. Play rate goes up one. Press goes up. His speed goes up one. Tackling zone coverage goes up 15. Walter Irons gotta be one of the best guys for our scheme. Ever. Ever. That is crazy. That is crazy. 95 man cover. We, that is the pick. That is, that, that is one of the best picks I've made in a long time. Um, Benton keeps going up. Now he's up to an 87 overall. Uh, Reggie Gilliam loses his dev. He goes up to an 80. He's now normal dev that dropped. Michael Carter goes up to 79. Kerbick keeps getting better and better. Uh, maybe he could replace TJ Watt at some point, perhaps the way he is progressing, 78 overall. Um, we get a plus two uh, to a, a rookie. At least he goes up, I guess. Najee Harris goes up to a 92. Patrick Queen goes up to an 89. Joey Porter to an 86. Pat Fryer moved to an 84. I mean, we had a solid, solid upgrades here. Simpson, 67. When we look at just our rookies right here, um, nobody really progressed outside of Walter Irons, right? I mean, we get the plus two there. Um, but Andrew Clayton stays the same. 
Um, Curtis Nelson stays the same. Everybody else stays the same. But let's look at the rookies across the NFL real quick. See who's going to be the highest rated rookies or the highest um, jump is actually going to be Tony Fowler, defensive tackle, first round draft pick, goes up 15. That's crazy. So we got Johnny Newton go up 14, undrafted guy from the Dolphins. Wow. Okay. Um, we get plus 13 here from an undrafted guy from the Dolphins, plus 11. So we get some high overalls, but of course, I think the highest is going to be Irons, right, at 86. I don't see a lot of other, I mean, we get the Tony Fowler, a lot of guys over 86 overall. So we might have the highest overall rookie, which is definitely cool. Definitely cool to see. We go to the NFL, the highest jumps are mainly the rookies, of course, but we do get a plus eight from Troy Franklin. That is a great pick there. Great pick, or not great pick, but a great upgrade right there. So there we go. Those are upgrades there. Here we will match schemes. There we go. Get the guys changing schemes. We will balance rosters. And then we'll run the free agency lottery. So 75 overall plus. Do we need any of these guys, right? We're not interested in James Conner. Uh, I mean, I guess... We, they're telling us we're interested in the kicker. That's okay. Uh, wide receiver, they definitely want us to bring one in. But that's all the guys here. We'll, we'll keep our teams on there. We will not take our team off of any of them. But here we go. Chase Claypool went to the Broncos. James Conner going to the Giants. Um, we did get DJ Shark. So we do get a, a wide receiver. And we get Levi Wallace at cornerback. So those are the free agency lottery guys. Uh, we'll do the number fix for around the league. Then we'll hop into the game really quick. All right, guys. So before we get out of here, let's recap everything that happened and show, you know, our um, our lineup at Depth Chart on next. And our lineup, we have 67 players going in to uh, week one of the preseason. We may add some more guys a little bit later, but this is the offense. This is the offense. We have Najee, Michael Carter there now. Um yeah, we have Clayton, who we drafted with Hidden Dev. We'll see how he progressed. 71 overall. Added uh, Chark out there. Roman Wilson, only normal Dev, but 77 overall. Offensive line, I think, looks solid. We have some depth here as well. So, I mean, I think things look okay. Pat Fryermuth still at tight end for us. Defensively, I mean, we got to we, – we answered a huge – spot right when it comes to cornerback i think actually we'll do that now we're moving to number one that's our number one guy that's our number one guy bro uh walter irons is 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 nice he, he is like that for sure um then we look at the defensive end i mean nelson hidden dev we'll see how he plays out but um maybe he could make a run at left end we'll move him to our number two left end guy and kind of see how that goes but um yeah that's it so last question um, how do y'all want to go about this? What we were doing before, we were super simming games, not super simming, and playing the moments for all these games to kind of get through them quicker, getting about three games in each video. Or do y'all want to break them down one by one? I'm assuming y'all still want to rock with the super sim or the playing the moments. So, but y'all let me know otherwise if y'all would like to see full games. Of course, playoffs and stuff like that will probably be full games. But um, yeah, that's gonna be it, man. Hopefully, this video was not too long. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Hopefully, this makes up. For, you know, me losing the file. We're ready to rock, man. Let's go ahead and continue this journey. Continue this Pittsburgh Steelers franchise. And as usual, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. It's D-Lord. I'm see y'all next time. Peace.